and grown. So good to be with you tonight at Christian Life Assembly. We've just been worshiping and just being reminded that he's worthy of our praise. And wherever you are, we invite you to worship too. Could you as we get started, Lord, we just do want to worship with those coming online with us now. Your presence is here. We don't believe your presence is just here. It's there where they are too. Even in whatever time they're watching this right now too, we believe your presence to be in that room, dear God, where they are. And we believe for good. And we just honor you for it tonight. We bless you tonight and just invite you and have this, this place where we are and that place where they are, too, in Jesus' name. And we're glad to be with you. We remind us of just a few things tonight as we get ready to get started. We're so glad to have Brother Bob and Sister Pam and Kenny with us tonight. They're going to share. And we'll talk about their share in just a second. But I did want to make mention of just a couple of three things. Uh, our um, Wednesday night service, Brother Gary will be sharing. Uh, and also, November 1st, as we've announced everybody, we're having our Hallelujah Day after the Sunday morning service. They're calling for good weather right now, so we're believing for that. And we're excited to, to do that. We're going to be outside, probably mostly back here. Uh, Brother Bob and Sister Pam have some speaker equipment they're going to use, and we're going to have maybe a little singing, maybe a little bit of. Uh, of, uh, a little bit of sharing. Sister Lance got something she's already working on to share, and uh, we're gonna have some games and a lot of good food. And, and I'm probably gonna miss something we're doing. We're gonna have an awesome time that day. And if you can be here, we sure invite you to be here with us on our Halloween day to celebrate what God has done for us. He's brought us through just about another year, amen. And we praise Him for it. We praise Him. So if you can be here with us, we invite you to do that. We also just remind everybody about our uh, time coming up for. Um, the Thanksgiving for our Thanksgiving uh, pumpkin pies. If you want to bring a pumpkin pie, we're going to do that for the community dinner here in Russellville. Uh, they'll, be di they'll be distributing it out, and that'll be coming up that Thanksgiving week. And uh, we also have the uh, shoe boxes for the Samaritan's Purse. They're all set up back there. If you need any info, there's there's both bulletins you can take back there as well. And uh, so we think that pretty well get. Get our announcement for the time being. We do have our Christmas Thanksgiving dinner December 6th is the plan for that. And so we're signing up for that as well. All right. I've had the privilege of being able to, to be with Brother Bob and Sister Pam in, in their house and invited me in. And, uh, they're sweet people. They really love the Lord and God's brought them through a lot. And uh, they've, they've been an encouragement since they've been coming here for several weeks now. They've been with us. And the, the Lord brought them here this year in, in to, to Kentucky. And uh, they, they've been a blessing and encouragement to us. God is good, amen. He's good to bring good folks into our lives. And so we're going to go ahead and turn the services over to them now and let them minister as they see fit. God bless you guys. Pennsylvania! Pennsylvania. We don't hold it against you either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place. God bless you. Guys. Well, we were both born in Kentucky. We just went astray a little bit. Welcome back home. <laughs> well, it's good to be here tonight. I want to thank you because he's worthy yes, he of our praise. And it seems like that's the theme tonight, to praise him. He's worthy of our praise. Yes, he is. We can never give him enough praise for what he has done for us. And I thank God for what he's done for us, for filling us with the precious Holy Ghost, yes. for being a witness for him. And that's what it counts, is to be a witness for him. Because, you know, people are watching our life. That's right. They are watching our life. They're watching us every day. And you know, you realize that those people out there, they're looking for something. They're looking for something different. And they're watching our life and they're sizing us up. And you know, I want to be exactly what the Lord wants me to be. And my desire is always that I want to, my desire is, I want people to see Jesus in me. And when you see Jesus in a person, it's going to come forth, and they're going to they're going to know something's different about you. And I would have my desire is to say I want to be like them because I know they love Jesus. 
Pray for me as I try to sing this song. Worthy the Lamb, and it goes right along with everything else tonight. Pray for me as I try. I give Him the glory and the praise.
you are, the Lord is there with you. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a good hand clap of You know, when we praise him, this song, I sing a lot. When I we was up there in Pennsylvania, there was one little gentleman in our church. He said, every time you sing this song, you make me cry. You know, this song, it will make you cry. When you think about it, You be, listen to the words of this song tonight. Listen to the song. Listen to the words. Just listen.
living water. Yes. And worthy of all of our praise and glory. And you know, my heart goes back to a time, and I believe it was November 1950, in a little two-room cabin under the hill in Mount Vernon. When I realized that I needed Jesus Christ as my Savior, kneeling by my bedside and my mother praying with me, I asked Jesus Christ into my heart. And he, re he gave me a life that I that is just unbelievable. You know, the world is in crisis. But you know, I'm living under the the abundant blessings of God. Amen. The windows of heaven are open. Right. And he's pouring out his blessings. You know, just we just need to get under the spout. You know? That's right. There's a dear lady that I love. She says, when you come into church, don't be like you got an umbrella over your head. But raise your hands like a pitcher and receive the blessings in the spirit of God. It's our choice. It's our choice. And you know, every time that we walk in the, in the doors of the church, we should leave differently. Because we've been blessed by God. We've been blessed by God. And you know, I grew up a son of a pastor, one of those quiet ones. And, and not having, I guess I was humble and shy. And the and I didn't never want to be up here. <laughs> I used to pray that they wouldn't ask me to read in Sunday school. <laughs> Even as an adult. But one day, God got a hold of me. He got a hold of me, and he transformed my life. And you know, he showed me what his love was all about. And I got into ministry, and I've been seeking every day to see someone saved. To see someone saved and come to God. And I work for God. And, and I, I put my own needs aside. And you know, up until this year, my wife and I, we didn't have a lot. We didn't really have a lot. But you know, it, we just can't get over how the Lord just keeps up blessing us. And how he keeps pouring it in. You know, he's truly wonderful. Amen. But that's not the kind of blessings that I've been seeking from God. Right. I've been seeking to see God's children heal. Amen. Because it's it's given yep. by the word of God and what he did on Calvary. Mm -hmm. What he did on Calvary. We cannot fathom the work that was done on Calvary. Right. You know? And in my ministry, I've probably got around 30 years pastor, and I don't know how many years I got in evangelism. And I used to be a church planner. I, I, I planned five churches with the help of the Lord. I didn't do any of it, but God just used me. Mm -hmm. I just always wanted to be his humble servant. Yeah. I was satisfied to clean the church. And you know, and that's what I did as a young man. I cleaned the church in the house of God. And I was so proud of cleaning the church and I made it just thick and span. And made it look so good, you know, because I felt like it was God's house. And I mowed the lawn, the church lawn, never being asked. You know, I never let it go. But one time, my, ne my dad never got a chance to, to mow the church lawn. Because I did. And some of it was kind of healing. But, I, you know, I was happy to demo it and give it a wonderful job. We just need to give back to the Lord. He gave his life on Calvary. And, you know, I love it when God lays on my heart to preach one of those messages that is stirring and uplifting. But I also love the kind of message that he gave me tonight. One of the quieter messages. And you know, I desire to share with you. And it's not me, but the word of God can change your life and to transform, transform your life. 
Tonight I want to talk about the most powerful force known to man. No, it's not the sun. It shines in the sky. It's not a nuclear bomb or whatever. And you know, and the Bible says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. John said, there is one that comes after me. I baptize you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. But that's not the most powerful force known to man. It is the power of his love. It is the power of his love. His love. You know? The power of his love nailed him to the cross. And, and he, he gave him, as a man, the power to stay on a cross and suffer and die and pay the price for your sins and my sin. You know? And he shared his love with us. He not only demonstrated his love on Calvary, he left the splendor of heaven to come down to die for you and I. He purposed in his heart to save us from sin and to reconcile us unto God and, and to pick up a fallen man that was lost and undone. And we had no hope. We had a debt that we couldn't pay. And he paid it for us on, on a cruel, rugged cross. First John 4 and 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Can you remember when Jesus Christ first came into your heart? Then you felt that new love deep down inside of you. The word declares when he comes into your heart, he says, all old things pass away and all things become new. For you are a new creature in Christ. You know, you remember how maybe you had an enemy, someone that you mistreated you and you didn't like them. And all of a sudden, when you became born again, they looked beautiful and you loved them. You loved them and you prayed for them. And you just couldn't wait to share what happened to you. Verse 7, Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows it and knows God. He who does not love he who does not love does not know God for God is love. Amen. God is love. Amen. You know that is who he is. God is love. You know, we experience some wonderful love. All of you that are parents, remember what it was like when your first child was born to you. And, and they looked up into your eyes. The overwhelming love you had for them. Oh, love can make you feel wonderful. Love can lift you up. Love can make you feel whole and joyful. You know? Mm -hmm. Love brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm -hmm. Love is the most powerful force in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not diminishing the power of the Holy Ghost or the power of faith. They are powerful because they are God. Sure. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. But of these, I believe the greatest power is the love of God. It will cause you to act in ways that you would never have. It will cause you to forgive your enemies. It will cause you to love one another. It will cause you to have joy in your heart. Yes. You know, we need to live in the presence of God and just feel those showers of love. There's a song, Showers of Blessings. Showers of Blessings. We need to feel that every day. His love is the greatest blessing. 
1 John 4 and 12 says, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. I don't want to live one day without the love of God in my heart. Yes. And his love has been perfected in us. You know, sometimes when we're born, we have physical flaws. We're not all created equal. But every true born-again believer is created equal in God. Yeah. We have no physical or spiritual flaws when we're born again. You know, our physical body may lead us to struggle at things. I've seen many drug addicts and drug dealers and, and prostitutes come to God. And then sometimes they struggle for a while. Some of them just get away, get over it all completely, and others struggle. But that doesn't diminish that God forced them pure and holy. And they were born a perfect child of God. You know, we get tainted by the world. But God does a perfect job. And if we reach in and we do all we can to love God back and to return his, his love and have that relationship that we heard about earlier in the past. Have that relationship. You know, love cements our relationship. You cannot have a relationship with God unless you truly love him. Unless you truly love him. Love is something that we cultivate. Love is something that we cherish. You know? My wife is my the most precious thing in this earth to me. Mm -hmm. She loves me so much. And I love her so much. You know? We believe that marriage should be 100% and 100%. And we love each other. And you know, since the day that we got married... Our love has not cooled off. But we're closer to this than we ever have been. We might be senior citizens, but when it comes to loving one another, it's just like it's the first day of our marriage. You know, we're, it, it's just so wonderful and it's so good. And our relationship with God needs to be the same way. You know, the love of God is just new every day. New every day. And he said, walk in love. 13 says, by this we know, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. He has given us of his spirit. And you know what? No matter what I do, the Lord, the Lord is a part of me. I've said to Many, many, many years, everything goes better with Jesus Christ. Everything goes better with Jesus Christ. When I've been out in a working world and I work, everything went better with Jesus. He caused things to be accomplished that I never could. And I always give him the glory and praise for it. But, you know, he, he caused things to happen in my work life that I wasn't educated. I wasn't, didn't have the knowledge to do. But through me, he made them work. And, and you know, it just amazed me at times that things come together so beautifully and so wonderfully. And, and the Lord just worked it all out. You know, worked it all out. And again and again, he showed me his love and his blessing. 14 says, and we have seen and testified that the Father sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Oh, what a Savior. Yes. Oh, what a Savior he is to me. Yes. Is he your Savior? Yes. Is he your Lord and Savior? Yes. He is worthy of your love. Yes. Worthy of your praise. Yes. He is worthy of your thanksgiving. Yes. And you know, I believe that we should be thanks, have thanksgiving in our heart every day. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because you know, his love for me is worth more than trillions of dollars. Right. It's worth, it's worth more than the national debt. Right. It's worth more than all the abundance of the world. Yes. 
his love for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And something so valuable and so, something so precious, we should just be excited over it. Yeah. We should love him. We should praise him. Mm -hmm. the, down in the Smoky Mountains, we were standing on a mountain, my brother and mom, and there was just valleys. I said, you see those valleys? I said, imagine that one was just falling over. That huge valley falling over. And that huge valley for full of silver. And that huge valley for full of diamonds. I said, they wouldn't make one, wouldn't make a down payment on one drop of the blood of Jesus. Right. That's how precious he is. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so precious and so wonderful. Mm -hmm. He is so good to me. Verse 15 says, Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God is abides in him, and he in God. That means confess with your life. That means you, you repent and you turn away, and you're living for God. Your life shows forth the glory of God. And we know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. Can you believe the Bible says that? As he is, so are we in the world. You know, there's things in the Bible that amazes me. How could the word say that? How could the word declare these things? But it's the hand of God, the Spirit of God that sent these things. Sure. Therefore, it's true. God cannot lie. He cannot be mistaken. It's true. Even though it sounds too good to be true, even though it sounds too good to be possible, it is true. Right. Because it's God's Word. It's, it's God's Word, you know. As He is, so are we in the world. We're a child of God, a child of the King. His royal blood flows through, through us. Amen. His spiritual Amen. blood, you know. Mm -hmm. Atomic bombs can kill it. The devil can't stop it, you know. The world can't turn it around. Right. But you know, you and I, we're, we're a child of God. And as long as, as we keep our hand on a plow, we're going through it. If you don't quit, you're going through. Right. If you don't give up, you're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Job said, though he slays me, yet while I love him. Yes. Yet while I love him. And you know, there's not a one of us following Jesus that don't go through things. Right. So what Jesus went through. Yep. But there, the love of God is there. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're like his little children. I always see myself as a little toddler mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God. And when I fall down, he just picks me up. Right. Picks me up. Yep. You know? He, he might dust off the dirt and just pick me up and set me on the path again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 says, you know, and I said that the world is, is in distress. The pandemic is here. And it's in the whole world. Mm -hmm. It's like Many people have lost hope. Many people are fearful. There are some people who will not go out of their house. You know? Verse 18 gives us the perfect answer. The perfect solution. There is no fear in love. Why is there no fear in love? But perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear involves torment. Fear involves torment. We don't need to be fearful because the love of God abides in us. God loved us enough to die on Calvary. He loved us to take 39 stripes for our healing. 
He loves us enough. We don't need to have any fear. We just need to love him. You know? The Bible says love overcomes or conquers a multitude of sin. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. You know, when I struggle in things, this portion of scripture helps me to know that the love that I have for God needs to be stronger. The more love I have, the more trust I have in him. I used to put it this way. When my son was real little, he always would get in the refrigerator and get whatever food that he liked, or in the cabinet or whatever. And it was always there for him. He didn't know that daddy could fail. You know, he didn't know that daddy uh, could, could fall down and have struggles and provide. He just took it for granted. And he enjoyed what daddy provided. Well, you know, God the Father cannot fail. Right. God the Father cannot fail. Mm -hmm. Those blessings are always there. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. and, as, and whenever we walk in the very best for God mm -hmm. that we know how, yeah. when we give him our all, the windows are heaven. The blessings are abundant. Galatians 5 and 6 says, For in Christ neither is circumcision nor uncircumcision about anything. You know, sometimes we get caught up in, in maybe denominational trends and whatever. Right. This is a pure thing. Yep. And you know, as, as churches, we have customs. What well, it says in the Bible that Jesus Christ went to the temple and read from the book of Isaiah, as was his custom. God honors our customs as long as we honor him. As long as we honor him. But he says, but faith worketh through love. And you know, in the King James, it says, faith works by love. Love is the power that works our faith. Amen. You know, we can dig through the Word of God and try to bolster our faith through Scripture. And that's a wonderful thing. That's something we should do. Mm -hmm. But the love of God is what's going to make the, is what's going to give us the power to make it work. Yes. You know, when we can weep and cry over that sick loved one or that neighbor or our children. That's what turns the tide. Yes. That's what makes the difference. You know? And I want to encourage you tonight to put your trust in God and your faith in God. Mm -hmm. Because toward the end of this book, in the times that we live in, this whole earth is going to shake. That's true. You know? We're just going through something maybe mild compared to what's out there for us. Yeah. But you know, my understanding of this book is before it gets really bad, God, God's going to carry us away to heaven. Right. He's going to call us home. You can be thankful that you don't have to go through this great tribulation. Because right. I can take this word and show you that some prophecy teachers are wrong. That we're, you know, God is going to call us home. He's not going to punish the righteous with the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. And the reason that God pours out his wrath upon the unrighteous is because he loves them. He wants them to repent. Yes. Just like maybe you, you spank your child or punish your child when they're small to keep them off the road. Mm -hmm. You know, God is going to punish the world for their sins so that they come to him. That's what Revelation is all about. You see, God is trying to turn everyone to him. 
He's given them all a chance. And, and you know, he's going to shake the world. And, you know, I can show you the scriptures to prove that. That he's going to shake the world. And the wrath of God is because he loves. Because he loves. He died on Calvary for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to love as he loves. And you know, we need to love for all that he's given us, for all that he's done. You know, I used to start my message out with a prayer, but I think I want to end it with a prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you, we love you and praise you. Jesus, you are so wonderful. Lord, you have the you have the love of our hearts and, and God you've given us everything you've created us you made us and you blessed us and God you give us life and Lord you, you gave us an abundant life help us to receive your blessings God help us to receive your blessings and Lord if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that has a need Lord, if they need salvation, touch their heart and bring them to you. God, if they need a healing or a financial miracle, God, in the name of Jesus, through the blood of Calvary, I just send that blessing to them. I declare through your word that they are healed. I declare through your word that, that their need is met. God, I love you and I praise you. And Lord, I know that you are moving around the world and that you work through the prayers of the saints. Lord, we just love you and we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for all the love that you've given us, Lord. We thank you and we just worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And you know, the blessings of this book is not something that uh, it's passed. Sure. It didn't leave with the apostles. Right. The day of Pentecost didn't stop with the apostles. But we're still living in it. Sure. We're still living in it. It's still real. You know, God hasn't diminished his love in his hand. And you know, he's there to take care of us. Sure. I've seen many, many too many to mention. You know, the Lord is still raising the dead. That's right. He's still right. healing broken bones. He's still healing cancer and opening our eyes. You know, and He's still meeting me. For my family, God has opened up the ground and brought water when we had no water. And, you know, my brother. Both a healing from a broken arm, and he was crippled by polio. And you know, he's stronger today than I am. And he walks straighter than I walk today. And God, you know, God healed him instantly. His crooked legs straightened up. I've seen a paralyzed get out of wheelchairs. And I'm here to tell you and declare that Jesus Christ does love one more than another. But he loves us all the same. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. We're all equal at the cross. He just declares that we believe and receive. Just believe and receive in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your love. Oh, thank you. If you wouldn't mind hanging here, brother. Asking for something, we're gonna to want to pray for the folks on the air one more time. If you've accepted Jesus or uh, you need prayer, whatever the case is, we just agree with you tonight and just write us and let us know. We'd love to hear how the love of God is changing your life and working in you. Father, I do pray for those. And Brother Bob, we've had the privilege to hear your word tonight. We ask that. Any that are struggling in that love, dear God, to accept it, that they will. 
because Lord, the time has come and your God when, as he talked about, the time is coming when you're coming for us. And it'll be too late, but we just pray that that love be accepted by each one tonight that you call the Lord for your good. You don't respect persons, but you have your God good in store. And we pray for that. There, that one tonight that needs your love, dear God. They need to feel the love they've never really experienced. And we pray for that one, dear God. Just as we've handed out the pillows and say that your love, that the people are loved, they are loved tonight. And we pray for them, dear God, for a great touch in Jesus' name. If they're having trouble loving, I pray that you give them that a greater touch. I just want to pray for us too for this. Father, we don't know what's coming ahead. And there may be some folks that come our way that are going to be hard to love. By whatever means, dear God, that it's that it's hard. We ask that you give us a supernatural love through the Holy Spirit. A supernatural love, dear God, for anybody, dear God, that maybe hates us because of you, that hates us because of our beliefs. Lord, we just pray you give us a love that comes from you for them, that's unconditional, has no, no conditions or strings attached, that we're going to love them just like you love us. We pray that blessing for everyone watching tonight. In Jesus' name. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. How we love you, Jesus. Because you first loved me. First loved us. Sing this. Oh, I God bless you tonight. We'll see you again real soon.